Hello, folks. Welcome to Scratch the Surface. I'm E.J. Scott. Today, my guest is Tanya Wright. Tanya is an actress who I met uh, during uh, True Blood because uh, she was on True Blood and my girlfriend was on True Blood. That's how we met. Um, But I remember Tanya from way back in the 80s when she was on The Cosby Show as Theo's girlfriend for a few episodes um so we talk about that a little bit uh before we get into more of what we talked about let me give myself a plug uh listen check me out on twitter at ej scott and at ej podcast i'm on instagram ej scott 1106 website ej scott.com uh, in 2012 i ran 12 marathons blindfolded and you can uh, uh rent or buy a documentary called running blind where you will see me do all those things. Um, it's uh, only two or three bucks to rent it or buy it, so it's well worth checking out. Um, I am losing my eyesight to an eye disease called choroideremia, and it runs in my family. My brother has it, and my nephews have it. Um, so I'm always trying to raise awareness and money. So um, checking out that documentary would be a good thing, uh, and, uh, and I think you'll like it. Um, am I missing anything? I guess that's about it. Um, yeah, so I, uh, Tanya was kind enough to come over to the house and talk with me. She has a podcast of her own uh, where she interviewed my girlfriend about uh, hair and, I guess, hair products and stuff like that. So uh, we talk about her podcast, and she's talk about the, the hair care products that she's coming out with. Um, and we talk about uh, acting and, and wh- how she grew up and all that good stuff. Um, and I guess that's about it. So uh, enjoy my talk with Tanya Wright from August 28th, 2018. Hi, Tanya. Hi, EJ. How's it going? It's going great. <laughs> <laughs> um, you just talked to my girlfriend for a few minutes. What were you guys talking about? Well, we were talking about hair. Yeah. Um, I have a podcast called Five Hairy Questions. and I Five Hairy Questions? Five Hairy Questions, <laughs> yes. Okay. And I talk to people um, in the entertainment industry um, about their hair. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because? Because it's part of a larger sort of world that I'm creating around hair. I have a hair product line called mm-hmm. Harriet. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a web series, there's a book called I Found God in My Hair, mm-hmm. 98 Spiritual Principles. Did I you learned. write that? I did. Oh, cool. Yeah. And so um, the podcast is part of the Harriet world. So you're, you're, it sounds like a franchise, you know, you're like franchising this, uh, this stuff. This is a, you're a mogul. Well, that, that's the idea, EJ. <laughs> I'm going to go with that <laughs> because that works for me. <laughs> hey, so Harriet's just a pun, right? There's no hair... There's no there's no actual person Harriet or is there? There is a person well, Harriet. Is. That's so funny. So okay. Harriet is a hair product line. So like shampoo, conditioner, mm-hmm. blah blah blah, for people with dry curly hair. Um, and Harriet is a person. Okay. Um, she is <laughs> she is my alter ego, and she's sort of based on my very early days of being an actress. And she's your Sasha Fierce. She's my Sasha Fierce. <laughs> but but she's like she's like mm, the reverse. She's not she's a girl who's just trying to find her way in the world. And um, she's an actress and she's a down and out actress. She lives in Harlem with her dog, Madge. Macarena Madge. Okay. And um, she one Christmas she doesn't have any money to buy her family any hair products and her roommate leaves her high and dry with three months back rent, and it, oh, she le- and and the, she wakes up in the morning, wakes up, and her whole house is basically v- vacant, except for these two jars: one with cocum butter, uh, which is a fruit from India, and marula mm-hmm. oil. Okay. And she's like, "What is this?" She gets online, and she tries to figure it out, and she realizes that these are great products for hair and body. Okay. And so she starts mixing things up, and she actually ends up making um, hair products for her friends and family for Christmas. Hmm. And Merry Christmas. <laughs> so this is you? 
This is me. I'm playing Harriet. So, so that happened. Did all that happen to you? No. It's no? all it's all uh, made up stuff. It's all made up stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why did you feel the need to have uh, a backstory for Harriet? Or why, you know, like where did she, when did she happen? Yeah. Um, she happened actually before the products happened. And I think it came uh, about because I'm an actor and I wanted to create a company and wanted to do something in the beauty industry. And... Things come out of my mind in terms of character and story and people. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's why, you know, it's a character and she had a life. Um, and it was great that I could also have the product line with the same name. Okay. So it just worked out. Do, with all that information, like, is that information on a website or something? Is, yeah. All that's on there. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cool. Harriet.com. Harriet.com. H-A-I-R-I-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's where the pun comes in. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Okay. See, I feel like I always have to gild that little bit, let people know, but like, um, they're like, yeah, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you get it. It's H-A-I-R. Get it? Harriet. Yeah. Uh, well, that's clever. Mm -hmm. uh, you, have you always been creative like that? I can't stop doing it, yeah. DJ. Yeah. It's you need to do it. I mean, I'm obsessive about it. Are you? Kind of well, in what way? I mean, uh, I'm always making things up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I got really, um, I got chastised a lot for it when I was a little kid. My grandmother was, was like, why are you always daydreaming? But I was like looking out the window and I was thinking about all these different stories. Like I would see a butterfly and then I would make this whole story about the butterfly and what he was doing and how he was going to have some journey and what was going to happen on the journey and who the, he was going to meet and then come back. And so it's like, that's the way I'm like nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably nuts. Yeah. You think so? I'm probably a little nuts. Really? Do you, do you do therapy or anything? I no, do therapy. Uh, no, I do therapy. I, and I'm, I do, I, I'm not nuts. I'm yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'd like, mm, I used to do therapy, yeah. but um, I just like, Calm my mind down, you know, prayer, meditation helps. Mm -hmm. um, and then I try to like do something with those daydreams, like put them into like a <laughs> beauty company. Yeah. So it's like a product, but then there's like this whole world with the people in the product. Yeah. You know, it's kind of crazy. It's good. It's like I find it hard to do just the one thing. Um, and I'm, I'm really trying hard to get better at that, but it's not working out that well. Really? Why? because I probably have a hyperactive mind. Okay. And people wouldn't necessarily think that about me because I'm kind of a calm person. Yeah. But just like, it's always going and shooting yeah. off. I'm How do you me. sleep? Do you sleep okay? I sleep like a baby. Yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> Sleeping is, I yeah, I sleep very well. If well, you're a if you meditate, yes. what kind of meditation do you do? I don't know. I just sit oh. quietly. Okay. <laughs> I, know, I know that they're transcendental and yeah, uh, yeah. you know, I, I don't know. I just um I just did the whole Deepak and Oprah thing. Mm, mm. I don't know what that I think it's called transcendental. She meditation. does TM, yeah. Yeah. Oprah. And um Yeah, and then I, I, I use the the you know, like the beauty business. I've written lots of scripts that are just sitting in my computer right now that I've just I put it all somewhere, I guess, that makes me keeps me sane. And healthy. Well, you 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 uh, made one movie. I made one movie. Uh, Butterfly. What's it called? Butterfly, Butterfly Rising. Butterfly Rising. Yes. And but based on a book, is that right? Well, I wrote the book after I made the movie. You okay? You wrote that. Okay, interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, but you wrote, directed, produced, and started. Yep. That's a lot. It's a lot. I told you I can't do one thing. Was that good for you? It was amazing for me. You know, and people told me like, oh my god, you can't. It's too many things you're doing on that movie. I mean, I was also a production. No, I wasn't a production guy. I was casting director. I was location manager. I was like driving people around. We was. It's just kind of crazy, <laughs> but. Um, but is that good for your energy? Um, it works for me. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of does. I mean, it, you know, it, 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 people told me that it was not a, a good thing for me to do. It was too many things. And when you're doing too many things, one thing is going to probably suffer or maybe sure. two things or the three things are going to suffer. Just focus on the one. Right. And um, and that that's common. That's wisdom. You know, that makes sense. But then I saw that there were other people that were doing 
it's not like a lot of people do it, but there there are these pockets of people who do lots of things. Yeah. And they kind of do them well. And so I just, I kind of just did it. And it yeah. was like really the best thing that I've ever, th- I feel like I've ever done in my entire life. Well, it's, it's good to take the, those chances sometimes. Yeah. Right? And to see, all right, well, everybody's telling me not to do it, but, I'm gonna, but I want to. Right. So let me just do it. I'll just do it. I'm so glad that I did. It goes. Phew. And now you got a finished product on your hands. Great movie that I'm yeah. really proud of. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, w- I went looking for it on iTunes. It's not on iTunes. It's not out yet. Oh, it's not out yet? No. Oh, oh, oh. But it's a, it's a few years old, though, right? Uh, we shot it a few years ago. It's been a labor of love. I, 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 it's, I didn't have much money right after we sure. shot it, so I couldn't start the editing process. Did you spend your own money time. to make it? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, I have an investor, and um, I do have to get him his money back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, <okay>. <laughs> but um, I got a plan for that. Okay. He'll get his money back. All right. Yeah. I'm a trip to Vegas. He'll be fine. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Uh, well, and you, you're you from, uh, you were born in the Bronx? Born in the Bronx. South Bronx. South Bronx. Uh, you're, you're one of four children. Mm-hmm. Oh, you did your homework. A little bit. Oh. Yeah. And your mom was 15? 15. That's amazing. Isn't it amazing? That's scary. It is <laughs> scary. I can't even imagine what that that was like for her. Okay, but you were there. Can can do you remember what it was like for her? I don't know what it was like for her. I remember what it was like for me. What was it like for you? Um growing up with a kind of a really young mom. It was like growing up with a young mom. Yeah. And she was young, and... Um, did she feel more like an older sister or something, or did she feel like a mom? Hmm. I she... wouldn't say she felt like either necessarily hmm. growing up. Um, you know, my, I, my grandmother was really a very um, big part of my life when we were little. Your four mom's of us, mom? My mom's mom. Mm-hmm. And so I think she sort of took on the the role of uh, a mother. But interestingly enough, as I've gotten older, my mother feels more like mommy to me. Hmm. That's so nice. it's in some weird way, it's it's kind of flipped and reversed itself. So, you know, as as I've created this company and all this, my mother, I would say, has been probably the most helpful figure in my life. I'm not kidding. Uh huh. Nice. And when she was pretty much absent for most of my life and my childhood, she's been um, there, particularly as it relates to this hair care company and hmm. in a very motherly way. Okay. Which is interesting. Life is interesting. <laughs> why, why was she not a part of your childhood? I think she was busy. Hmm. She was trying to figure out her life. Were you still living with her? Sometimes we lived t- with her. Okay. Yeah. And we're, and sometimes you lived with your but grandmother? But mostly lived with my grandmother. I see. Uh, yeah. And so, you know, she was trying to finish school and, mm-hmm. yeah. Because your mom, at 15, I assume she was living with your grandmother. Yes. And then, what, at 18, she moved out or something? Well, there were lots of times where she moved out and then she moved back. we moved back with my grandmother, moved out, moved back with my grandmother. So I think she would try to do it on her own with two kids and realize how tough that was mm-hmm. and really needed um, the support of her mother. Mm. And, um, and I'm really grateful for my grandmother. She's the great love of my life. She's still around? She's not. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. When did she pass? She passed um, hmm, about 10 years ago now. Oh, wow. A long time ago, actually. Yeah. Because uh, your mom's still around. Oh, yeah. Right? My mom's imagine. very much still around. And mm-hmm. so she must be around 60? Something yes. Like that? Mm-hmm. So she's still pretty young. She's, my mother's very young. She's yeah. very young. She's active. and. Um, Where does she live? In New York still? She's in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Okay. Mm-hmm. Do you get to see her? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's weird. Talk to her all the time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, where is she? Philly? Uh, no. It's a, a, in the Poconos. The, oh, no kidding. Okay. Mm-hmm. Interesting. She's yeah. a skier? No, not at all. Oh my God, no, no, is, no. Is there gambling there? Yes, there's there gambling. Is there. Does she gamble? No, is she gambling. Actually, she does gamble. Does she a little bit? She Slots? does. Yeah, I mean, you know, she does. I don't know what she does. I mean, what's the doing the Poconos? I don't, I don't know. know. I think she she just likes it there. It's does she peaceful. work? 
She doesn't anymore. Yeah. She's what, retired. What'd she do? So um, my mother is actually quite a success story for, for a woman who had two children in the South Bronx when she was 15 years old. Um, she had four all together. Four right? all together. She really worked herself up and um, went to high school, college, hmm. got a master's degree. Wow. She's advised two presidents on public policy. Which ones? And, um, Clinton and Bush. Oh, on, on public policy and um, AIDS. Um, AIDS, the disease? The disease. Wow. Mm-hmm. And then uh, in the latter part of her life, she worked uh, at a corporation. Um, and she just recently retired. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. What did what she study in school? Remember she got a master's in? Uh, Political stuff, I guess, something? Public policy, I mean, I don't know. Okay. (laughs) Something like that. (laughs) Yeah. So where did she go to school? Did she go to school in New York? She went to school in New York. Okay. She went to Hunter College, and uh, I think she got a master's, Baruch. Yeah. So she she was around when you were growing up, uh, at least on some level, and she was probably studying... I mean, that's a lot of work. To, so I can't to, imagine how much probably, it was. Was she also working jobs, too? She probably. was working jobs. Yeah. She was going to school, and she was, you know, trying to raise two kids. Yeah. The best she knew how, with no husband. Yeah. Um, Who was... Do you, who's your father? Do you know? Oh, yeah. yeah. Of course I know my father. Yeah, he's... Fif- he's, he's, he's 15. Uh, yeah. yeah. Was he 15, too? He was 18. He was 18. Okay. Yeah. All right. Wow. Mm-hmm. And were they dating? Yes. Back in the... Back mm-hmm. the still friends to this day. Are they? Oh, that's nice. I mean, I'm so glad that they, you know, didn't live in the house together, you know, all that. <laughs> that would but, have been uh, a lot, right? Y- yeah, they're not, was they're not suited. Was part of your life go, uh, growing up, too? Or was not really. Not really. No. That's a lot, I guess, for an 18-year-old who wasn't planning. Mm-hmm. That's kind of scary, I bet. Yeah, but I don't know. My mother kind of, you know, I mean, she patched it together. And, you know, it was just, dad was, I just felt like maybe he didn't. She, I think she was patching it together so well, he didn't really feel like, well, what can I do? She's kind of figuring it out. So mm. Mm. who knows? Did I, you, I don't know. what. Did you guys ever have a relationship, you and your dad? Um, not too much of a relationship. My, 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 you know, I, I left New York um, very early on. I was very young. I actually went to live with my grandmother uh, yeah. permanently when I was like 13. I was like... I feel like my grandmother is, is a good kind of stable. Is that in New York? In New York. Okay. And then I went to boarding school, which was in Pennsylvania. Mm. And then I went to college, which was upstate New York. And then I came to Los Angeles. So since I've been 13, I mean, I've been on my own, like mostly here on the West Coast, which right. is the predominant part of my adult life. So... um and my father's has always been in New York with my sister. So my father's very involved in my sister's life. My sister okay. has two kids. Um, she lives in Harlem. So even after uh, your mom and dad had you, they stayed together and had, an, had another child? No. Oh. They were gone quick. Oh. Okay. <laughs> right? Like, quick. So, like, right after maybe so I was, my sister was born. Or half-sister? Or she half-sister? She's my full sister. She's your full sister. Okay. So then they So got right together. after that, okay. it was... Kaput between the two of them. Okay. And then my mother had other relationships, other marriages. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, but your sister is from your your mom and dad had two kids together? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Just trying to figure that out. Yes. So, okay. So how long were they, did they date after... After oh, I don't know. I mean, I was too young to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I never went back to. I never asked. So do I don't you know. go? Uh, do you stay in touch with your half uh, siblings? Yeah, I don't think of them as half though. Okay, you know, we think you know we're yeah. brother and sister. That's nice. But yeah, mm-hmm. do you ever spend like holidays together? And stuff? Oh yeah, yeah. We oh, spend nice. all the holidays Is everybody together. Everybody on the East Coast. Everyone's on the East Coast. I'm the okay. only one who's out here. Uh, what do they think of your acting and stuff? Are they supportive? Um. Yeah, and in, in, in the ways that they can be, I, I guess. Um, they don't really understand what I do, I don't think. Yeah, yeah. What you do know? they do? Um, so what my sister jobs? is, yeah, she works at a nonprofit, and hmm. my brother is, um, he's just really trying to figure out what he wants to do. Yeah. And and my other brother died, was oh. killed. Oh, God, yeah. I'm sorry I didn't. I didn't yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, how was he killed? He was shot and killed by cops. 
Oh my God. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. When, how long ago? About 10 years ago. 10 years. Jeez. I'm so sorry. Yeah. In New York? Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Wow. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. Was it uh, one of those situations where he, he, had, he had a phone in his hand or something? No. And it's, or you know, I don't really feel like talking you about it right about now. Okay. It's really what the movie is about, Butterfly Rising. Oh, okay. So... So yeah. That inspired the, the movie. Yeah, I mean the 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 movie is really about um I was very inspired by this story in the Bible um about Mary and Martha, their two sisters in the Bible who had a brother named Lazarus who died. And uh they said Jesus Jesus, you know, come and help us with our brother, you know, he's died dead and uh, we would like uh, for you to raise him from the dead. And if you're familiar with the story, eventually Lazarus does rise from the dead. So I remember reading that shortly after my brother died, and uh, I was very inspired by that story. I just couldn't get it out of my mind, and, and it was that daydreaming. So then I was like dreaming and about these two women, and I was like, what about if there was a black woman and a white woman? Like there would be mm, sisters, not literal sisters, metaphorical sisters. And they had this brother named Lazarus, who's this sort of amorphous kind of, in my world, you know, in my mind, it's sort of a kind of a spiritual, shadowy kind of not human figure, kind of an angel. <laughs> and um, and so I wrote this story about these two sisters going to see this Lazarus, who is going to you know, kind of heal them and make their dreams come true. Very, two very unlikely women. One is Rose. Her name is Rose. It's just the character I played. And she uh, has relationships with other women's husbands. Mm-mm. She's very kind of aggressive in this small town, very apologetic for her um, sexuality and her um, the way she goes about doing things. And um, Lila Bell is uh, the singer who doesn't sing anymore. And she's sort of patterned after uh, myself. She has a brother who died. Mm. And uh, they set out on the open road to, they steal a vintage truck and set out on the open road <laughs> to meet this mythical Lazarus of the butterflies. Mm. And, uh, and the, the movie's a road trip movie. It's really about healing. It's about forgiveness. It's about love. It's about transformation. Mm-hmm. And... Um, I'm very proud of that movie. Did it help you? To oh my that God, movie? yes. And to get through your grief? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I guess you were, were you born or raised uh, religious? Um, religious family? Stuff? No, Not so much. really religious. I mean, we went to church. And I remember going to church. Um, but I think it wasn't until I was older and I sort of... Um, when I was out on my own, did I begin to understand uh, or experience more what spirituality was for, for myself mm-hmm. instead of, you know, sort of doing things that, you know, go to church on Sunday and then, you know, go to church from 9 to 11 and then, I don't know, you go live your life. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so it's a little different these days. Yeah, yeah. Um, wow, that's that's pretty powerful. Mm-hmm. You know that that that's a powerful story. Um, uh, and you, when did you decide you wanted to be an actor? Because you were, I read you were mostly a writer growing up. Mm-hmm. When did you start acting? Um, I started acting. Probably as kids, you do like plays, yeah, and stuff like that. I did. Uh, it did school plays for sure. First school play I ever did was a little uh, play called The Birch Tree, <laughs> where and I and I played the birch tree. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't have any lines. <laughs> it was forty five minutes, and I was like in this silver tinsel on stage, and then people would dance around and talk around me and sing around me. But it was always about me. But I never had any words. Why didn't they just like use an actual tree? <laughs> I don't know, but I was the star of the show. Oh, I brought oh. the house down, apparently. No, I'm okay. Yes. I mean, it was, I mean, I don't even know why or how, what, 
But that was my introduction to acting 101. That's funny. Um, and for, for a very shy kid, I was very shy. In fact, I was not even like, it was fitting because I, I wouldn't talk in class. I wouldn't raise my hand. And oh, wow. The teacher was like, oh, Tanya never engages and puts her hand up in class. I knew she knows the answer. I don't know why she never does. Were you a good student? Yeah, I was a fine student. You get good grades? Yeah, I did. But, uh, I mean, it was fine grades. It wasn't, you know. Yeah. I, I, would, I don't feel like, you know, I, I was like, uh, I loved school. Like I, was, like, I wanted to like, okay, I know this is something I have to do. Let's get in, let's get out. Yeah. And let me go live life. Because <laughs> I feel like that's really school. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, um, so, but acting, I started that. And then it wasn't until, um, until high school. I met Malcolm Jamal Warner, who played Theo on The Cosby Show. Yeah. Where, where'd you meet him? In New York. Before you did Cosby Show? That was when I did The Cosby Show. Well, I met did, him. Met him and then did And it. he was on The Cosby Show. And, uh, and he got you, did he get you, help get you the part? Well, he said they were looking for someone to play his girlfriend on the show. Yeah. And I was not an actress. I wanted to be a writer. That's really what I wanted to do because I was very shy and quiet. And um, although I had done some acting, it just never occurred to me that I could like, I don't know. It just never occurred to me. Yeah. And, uh, and so he's like, oh, they're looking for someone to play my girlfriend on the show. I was like, oh, that's really nice. At the time, the Cosby show was like the biggest show in the world. It was yeah. huge, huge. Um, and it wasn't anything I was interested in, to be frank. So he was, was he pitching you to be his girlfriend so on the show? So I guess he spoke to the casting director and Bill Cosby and the writers and the producers. And I got a call from the casting director a couple of days afterwards. And they said, oh, come down, you know. And I was like, I'm not an actress. He was like, ah, oh, that's okay. You know, just come. What do you got to lose? I said, yeah. okay. So I went down and um, auditioned five of the ladies, and we went in one by one, and they asked us to stay outside. And um, I went in, read with Malcolm. I mean, it was like a cold situation. I yeah. had no time with the material or anything. So I literally just read it the way I thought it should be read and I didn't have any fear or anything because it's like it was nothing to lose or sure, gain, sure. you know, as far as I was concerned. And um, and then they said there wasn't any agent or anything. So we were all waiting outside the ladies because the, the role worked immediately. And they said, OK, everyone can go home. Tanya, you stay. You come back at 10 a.m. There's a table read for blocking and blah. And it was like, what is all this table read blocking? I had no idea what any of that was. <laughs> right. And um, and so that was my that was my <laughs> acting one on one. That yes. was my introduction. That's wild. So how'd you meet Malcolm in New York? Uh, some friends or something? No, Malcolm. Uh, I was good friends with Malcolm's cousin. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Like through school and stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. And uh, was was that Malcolm's way? Was he trying to hit on you, or did you want? Did he want you to be his girlfriend? Is that what was going on? Um, <laughs> I suspect that he would like for yeah. me to be his girlfriend on the show. I just on the show. I yeah. And so um, he's, a, he's a good guy. Ever? No. Mm -mm. Okay. No. He is we a were, good dude. He's, he's a, a good, good guy. Uh, there was a guy I was friends with who passed away a couple of years ago in Chicago, and he did an episode of Cosby Show. Mm -hmm. And somebody found a clip of it where he and, and Malcolm had a scene together. And I tweeted about it, mm -hmm. and Malcolm responded, mm -hmm. and it was really sweet that yeah. he would respond and say, "Oh, condolences," and all. You know, he was just very nice. He didn't he he didn't have to do that. He's a really whatsoever. nice guy. Malcolm so is a great guy, talented and, guy um, too. Mm -hmm. And so, really, I credit Malcolm with, um, you know, helping me. Uh, uh, in, in, I mean, you know, and I, I haven't seen Malcolm in, in years, but mm. we we we. Um, see each other at different events and he's like, well, you did pretty well for yourself. You know what I mean? <laughs> all, all these years, yeah. you know, but no, I mean, it was him really, you know, who was like, oh, I think she should pay my girlfriend on the show. And, and he's like, you kind of took the ball and ran with it. You've been acting all this time. And like, I loved, she, you know, he was a big True Blood fan. Oh, that's cool. And he was like, look at Tanya. He would have been great <laughs> on that show. Yeah. He would have been awesome. Mm -hmm. um, that's so funny. And that's because that's, that's how I know you originally, mm -hmm. is the Cosby show. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. I remember seeing you on, on True Blood and going, she was on the Cosby show. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you know what? I got to tell you, of all, I mean, I've done kind of a lot of things. The Cosby show is the thing that people like, 
you look familiar. Now I can, like, okay, you want me in orange is new black, true right, blood. Right, blah, blah, blah. Right. They're like, no, no, no. And Cosby Show, and they're like, yes! <laughs> I mean, like, oh my God, how many years ago was that? That was 80 <laughs> lifetimes ago. Yeah. And you only did two episodes. I only did two episodes. Yeah. <laughs> but they're rerunning at some point yeah. around the world all the time. Yeah, yeah. And so it seems like it was more than it was, but it was just those two. Did you get along with everybody on the set? Oh, yeah, it was great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you think of the recent stuff with Bill and stuff? I think it's all very unfortunate and yeah. sad. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. awful. It's pretty yeah. awful. Uh, how's Felicia Rashago? I love her. She's great. She is a massive talent. Yeah. Um, she, God, I mean, you know, she's doing a lot of directing these days, and she's just... She's in the new Drake video. Oh, is she? Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah. She's yelling at Drake to get off her property. Right. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty funny. Yeah. That's wild. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but are you, you're not you're not married. I am not married. Uh, no ch- children. Of no your own? children. You didn't want to have a kid at fifteen. I did not want to have a kid at fifteen. <laughs> did you God, it? Lord, no. <laughs> um, is there? Uh, are you dating or anything? No, I'm single. You're single. Are you looking? I'm open to okay. wonderfulness. All right. You know what I mean? You're a catch. You know, I think I will. I, I'd say I'm the catch of the century. I ain't I gonna be. So. I ain't gonna lie to I don't you. Know. You don't have to lie. I'm just saying. <laughs> Uh, I really am. But, it's um, on you up on social media. <laughs> interested. No. Give her a pitch. No. <laughs> I'm very happy. I mean, I'm very, um, I'm fulfilled with with what I'm doing. Um, sometimes I'm like, you know, I come in after like, you know, going here. And I'm like, okay, so i am got this film. I'm getting ready to go and, and shoot in, in Utah. Oh, cool. And then sometimes when I get home, I'm like, oh, it'd be nice to, you know, have someone home. Yeah. To talk to. And, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And share life with. Yeah. Um, Did you have, have you had that? Um, Did you live with somebody? Or I have lived with people intermittently. Not a whole lot of people. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mostly live, have lived alone. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, I think in that article, I said. Talk about uh, how I'm mostly, mostly I think, a lone wolf. I like to move in, uh, I don't know, I like to be nimble and. uh, You like to be like, uh, pick up and go whenever you want, that type of thing? uh, Yeah, I do like to do that. But, you know, I'm not sure that there are people who would be um, fine with that, you know. It's it's not like it's like that's a, a hindrance of any kind. Are you waiting for Malcolm Jamal Warner? Ah! Is that what's happening? Well, I think Malcolm Jamal Warner is actually taken, <laughs> very taken these days. You're waiting it out. He's, yes, he's got a child and he's got a life. God bless him. But uh, no, I'm 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 waiting for the man that God has for me. Okay. And uh, I think I'll know him when I see him. Yeah. Do you have a type? Uh, no. no. And I don't do it. I don't feel like I do it. Like that. I mean, I've gone out with all kinds of guys, mm-hmm. and, and uh, you know, and they haven't been one one specific type. It's just like, oh, I like this person. Yeah, I like people who are interesting, and uh, and that I I like listening to what they have to say and their ideas about things. Yeah. I think communication is important. You know, the older I get, there 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 are now three things that are, are I think are important in a, in a relationship. Communication is one of them. Someone that's who's able to articulate their self and their emotions. Mm-hmm. You know, like not weepy stuff necessarily, but you gotta have some sort of be in touch with yourself at least. Sure. At least or, or make an effort to be in touch with yourself. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, to be care a caring person. Yeah. And to have passionate. Co- yeah. And have courage. Mm-hmm. That's important in a relationship. Courage is important. Yeah, how do you how do you mean? Can you give it an example of the courage in a relationship? Um, courage to communicate. <laughs> you know, for example, uh, yeah. you know, courage to try again. Um, to the courage to put your ego aside and um, or your pride. Mm-hmm. That's important. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you'll, you'll find that. Yeah. I think you'll find that. I think I'll find it too. 
Yeah. Yeah. It it hasn't been top of mind focus lately because I've been really so invested in building my company and acting and um you know, the creative projects, you know, writing and directing. You know who's happily married? Who? Harriet. Is Harriet? Harriet's ever? very she's been married a long time. <laughs> what? Wait. You're telling me that's news to me. She found the perfect man. Oh my god. <laughs> Who is he? Tell me. He's got courage. He's got courage. He's caring. He's Denzel Washington. Ah! <laughs> yes. Um, well, yeah, you I'm sure you do. Do you ever do a dating apps? Do you ever do that stuff? No. That's I know Deb that's I how you and Deb met. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, I never talked to you guys about that. Yeah. How tell me about that? About meeting? Yes. Well, it was before apps per se, but um because uh, it was almost 11 years ago that mm-hmm. we met. Uh, on Match.com. Match.com. And I was on there for a year and a half before mm-hmm. I met her. Mm-hmm. So I dated or kind of dated or met a bunch of bunch of different people. But I was the first person she met. Really? Yeah. And uh, she was uh, love struck immediately. Oh, right. I bet <laughs> it was the other way around. Huh? I'm sorry. Yes, it was the other way around. It was the other way I'm around. Saying, you saying. said, let me lock this <laughs> down <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, and that was pretty much it i mean we we, we went out on a date then i said uh hey i'm it was around the holiday so i was like I'm, I'm leaving town in a week so if we're able to get together before i leave town again that'd be great and mm-hmm. she said okay i'm free saturday and i said okay so we're on two dates in oh well, first week uh-huh. and uh, then i didn't see her for three weeks and then uh we then we started dating i love that yeah, pretty crazy. I now we've been living together for seven years, mm-hmm. and uh, things are going well. We're going to celebrate 11 years in December. Yay! Yeah. I love that. Still going strong. Going strong. Um, yeah, right after we met, she was she started booking stuff, mm-hmm. and you know, maybe six months after we met, she booked True Blood. Oh, wow. You're That's a good that. luck charm, EJ. Just I came just, in there and I, just... I think you're right. Ah! <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> Oh, easy guys. Uh, we have we're, our dogs are are still fresh, uh, fresh to uh, uh, new people and stuff. So we're training them. So pardon pardon the uh, intrusion. Yes. But um, do you, did you say you have a dog? I do. Macarena. Macarena. That's right. <laughs> why the why the name? You love the song so much. <laughs> no, she's a rescue, and that was her name. Oh no! Kidding. And I was like, no way am I changing that name. That Hilarious. is too wonderful. What kind of dog? She's Labrador, lab mix. Ooh. Yeah. Oh yeah, those two are lab mixes. Mm-hmm. What do you know? What she's lab mixed with? We don't know what they're mixed with. Mm, maybe pointer. I'm told because okay. she does a little pointing thing with her paw sometimes. Oh cute. Yeah. How old is she? She's thirteen. Oh she's wow, up she's there. up there. Yeah. Whoa, how long have you had her? Since she was eight months. Oh, wow. So that is going to be a day. Oh, no. Yeah. (laughs) It's horrible. Horrible. Listen, I prepare my mind. I really, I've been working on myself for like the last year for the preparation. I can't (laughs) Because baby, mm, I can't either. But, you know, this is the pack you make when these little creatures come into your life. They're only here for a short time. I didn't agree to that. Yeah. I did not agree to that. I know, but that is, <laughs> that's the contract. I did not sign that contract. I know. <laughs> I know. Me and Deborah, whatever, so not not a lot, but once in a while we'll look at Banner, who, who we've had since eight weeks. Uh huh. And we're like, the day he goes, this is going to be the worst day of yes. our lives. For sure. Yes. For sure. Ugh. And yes. I've never, uh, did, were you raised with pets? I was not. Me neither. So, no. I mean, I had like a couple cats that I, I don't remember and, and a dog that, I didn't have. I wasn't very close with for a couple of years, mm-hmm. um, but he's like my real first pet, right? And um, and kind of Deborah's too. Although she was raised with a with a lab for like six seven years mm-hmm. until she moved out of the house. But um, but that lab lasted till seventeen. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's and they had to, he they had to put him down because he got an infection in his tail. And stuff. But he was he was he was, he was in rough really shape Ill. at the end. Yeah. You know? No, Macarena's, you know, walks really slow now. She's oh. got a big lump in her hind leg. Oh, no. And she's got lots and lots and lots of gray hair on her face. Oh, Macarena. So, she, so. She's, not, dang, she's not doing the Macarena. Then. She's not doing the Macarena. <laughs> she's doing the Macarena on the inside, but mostly oh. she's just like chilling. Oh, that thing. Oh, <laughs> but she's good, you know, good spirited and she's fiercely protective of me and 
Yeah. I just love her to death. She's your best friend. She is my little baby oh. girl. Okay. Is that, she, um, do you think you'd get another one? Another I don't pet? know. Yeah. Does it feel it's, like well, a betrayal or something? Maybe. Um, but also, it's it's difficult to be a single woman and have a dog and, yeah. you know, like traveling. Yeah. Sure. And it's difficult. Yeah. What do you do with, with it when you travel? Your well, friends watch? Uh, your friends, yeah. neighbors. That's mm-hmm. nice. Mm-hmm. That's nice. Um, well, you've been very successful in your career. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, is it okay if I go down Please. some of sure. some of what you've done? Mm-hmm. Um, let me make sure I cover this stuff here. Okay, uh, so Cosby Show. Uh, Parker Lewis, you did like an episode of Parker oh, Lewis yeah. Can't Lose. <laughs> right. Who I had Cor- I had the lead of that on my podcast, Corey Nemec. Really? Yeah, yeah. What's he doing these days? He's uh, He does a lot of um, graffiti art. Huh. He's a graffiti artist. I think he's still, he is still acting actually. Um, he had a, I know it was a really interesting talk because he had a really bad accident on a set a few years back and that kind of set him back. I for vaguely like remember hearing something about that. Yeah. It, he talked about it. It was pretty, it, it sounded really intense yeah. and he kind of easily died. Mm. Um, you had, uh, you were an episode of Beverly Hills 90210. <laughs> uh, how was that? Was that pretty? It was great. I love that show. I watched all these shows growing up, by the mm-hmm. way. Yeah. Uh, that's probably also how I know you because uh, I watched all these shows. Right. Um, Living Single. Yeah. Episode of that. Family Matters. Uh-huh. Wayne's Brothers. Oh my gosh. You, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you did 14 episodes of a show called Buddies. I did. That only lasted one season, but that starred Dave Chappelle. It did. That's amazing. I, one of my favorite stand up comics ever. One yes. of the greatest. Mm-hmm. Uh, how'd you guys, how'd you like that? How'd you guys get along? It's great. I, I adore Dave Chappelle. I think he's brilliant and fantastic and. Um, just a wonderful guy. We we were all very young, and uh, it was right after the time they did a um, very popular show, Friends. Mm. And so Hollywood, being what Hollywood is, right. tries to do, you know, tries to get capture another friend. So yeah. it was like buddies, cousins, <laughs> Pam and Bill. I mean, it was like a whole slew of shows that had to do with this whole friendship theme and. Yeah. Just making a way out of no way, 20-something people and all of this sort of thing. So uh, <laughs> it's like 50 million of those. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, I mean, it was, it was the producers oh. of... Um, Dev, you got that? <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. That's okay. It's probably nothing. Producers um, of... Um, oh, shush! Shush! No! <laughs> Shush! Ay, ay, ay. Home improvement. <laughs> and, uh, Shh. Shh. Sorry. Uh, it was the producers of Home Improvement? It's producers of Home Improvement. and um, I watched that show, too. Yeah, and Roseanne, actually. I watched that show. And, um, so it was on ABC? It was on ABC, and it was supposed to be like, the next big thing. And they were like, oh my God, you guys better get ready. This is going to, your life is going to change. It's going to be this. And I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. Are you excited or nervous about that? I I don't know. I was never, I've never ever been attached to that part of like acting and life or Hollywood. I just, you know, I just live my life. (laughs) And uh, very quietly and I don't get into it. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, yeah, it was like supposed to be this big thing. And it got picked up, you know, the whole season because yeah. of these super producers. And Dave Chappelle was this rising star and everyone wanted him. And they, you know, got him for this pilot. And then um, it just didn't work out. We yeah. shot all all episodes and ABC put it on the air after four episodes. The ratings were not very good. And so. Oh, they pulled it after pulled four, it. four episodes. Jeez. That was it. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. They should show it somewhere else because they did that with um, the Dana Carvey show. They do show it. I mean, I get like residual checks. I don't look and see where, you know, like even in, like around the world, I, like I'll get, you know. Weird. Yeah. Like China is showing buddies. Probably. It's huge in China. Huge in China. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. Did you get to hang out with it? Like did you guys like socialize and stuff? Oh, my God, yes. Yeah. I adore Dave. I haven't seen him 
um, in a while, but um, he's a great person. Yeah. I love Dave Chappelle. Giant love, talent. love, love Dave Chappelle. Was he stoned all the time? <laughs> um, he he was a little 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 of that. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> Dave, uh, Dave introduced me, I think, to hip hop music. Oh wow! No kidding. He was very into hip hop oh, yeah, music. Yeah, he's a big music guy. Yeah, and Dave Chappelle also took me to my first strip club. What? <laughs> Get out of here! Which one? Do you remember? It was like Star Strip or something. Uh, La Siena guy. He's like, come in, Tanya. But you know, you gotta know. talk slow and got a little weed. God, you can come over here and get you a lap dance. I was like, wow. It was like, Wait, oh my god. Was it like a bunch of people from work? That went it was. To yeah. It? Well, it was on a bunch of people. It was like a group of us. Yeah. You know, from the show, and uh, I was like, yeah. And so yeah, I used to go a lot to the comedy clubs with Dave and. Um, it's an interesting world. It's an interesting, <laughs> yeah, sure smoky world. Yeah, yeah. How'd you like the strip club? Pretty good? It was pretty good. Did you get a dance or anything? Uh, I think I got a dance. I was like, I don't know if I want your ass all in my face like this. Ah. What's with the glitter? <laughs> right. I mean, like, but it, but it looked like it was fun. Like, I was a part of me that was like, man, maybe I can do that. You know what I mean? There's this, because I, as, as introvert as, as I am, I think there is a little bit of an exhibitionist. Harriet. Right. Harriet's Harriet. the biggest exhibitionist. I mean, I am an actor, and I, I like, somehow gravitate toward, like, the biggest shows in the world. Yeah. You know, I don't know what that is, yeah. but it's like, you know, there's there's something happening there. But I was like, I would look at the girls and I was like, look at her, look at her go. Like, I want to get up there on the pole and yeah, and do that. And, you know what I mean? Give it a <laughs> shot. I was like, maybe I could do amateur night. Ah. Maybe. They do have, they do have like strip pole dancing for exercise classes. Oh, I know they do. Know yes, that? yes, yes. You can try that, see how you do. Yeah, I could try that. And if you really excel in class, you're like, all right, let's, let's Just try take it, it out. To, take it to the main stage. Make some money off of it. I don't think that would work out for me, though. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, also in that show was Judith Ivey. Oh, yes. Who's a wonderful actress. Oh, she's beyond. Is she passed away? I think she's passed she away. She has not passed away. She's not. No. Good. I'm glad. Mm-mm. Richard Roundtree. Yes. Shaft. Has he passed away? No. He is not. Good. Everybody's still alive. In <laughs> yes. This. I met him once. Mm-hmm. I, I felt bad. I, I was bothering him because he was at a con and he was eating. And I was like, oh my God, it's Richard Roundtree. Uh-huh. And I was like, sir, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Can I just please get a picture with mm-hmm. you? And he's like, I'm eating. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. Can I please do it? Oh, <laughs> no, you didn't. Oh, that's the worst. No, don't do that with people eating. And then he did. And then he did. Oh, I know. I know. God, you but were I, like, I know. Oh. But I got the picture. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, staff. Staff. oh was how, was, how was he at work with he, he was great he was he was great he was um i mean you know he was much older than us because he yeah. wasn't like trying to hang out with us he kids was he was club? like no he wasn't at the strip club he come in what you know what i mean i had work we his work it's work you come in go in he lived his life yeah, yeah. You know i mean he was in a whole different generation and yeah, yeah. You know, he's a whole different mindset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, a couple episodes of Moesha. Yeah. <laughs> uh, twenty four. He did nine episodes of twenty four. How was that? Like, Keith, how was Keith for Sutherland and all those guys? Mm, that was wonderful. Twenty four. That's, in- that's an intense show. It was an intense. Was the show. set intense? It was an intense set? Would you say? I would say, you know, there's something about in 24 that is inherently intense because it was that clock it was yeah. always ticking. Well, it was always terrorism and shooting. People, and you didn't yeah. really know where the hell they were going with that. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, you have to really stay very present. That was the thing I remember most about 24, staying present, not indicating anything because you don't really know. You don't even know if you're the good guy or the bad guy. Right. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. So, you have um, to stay pretty neutral. You have to stay pretty neutral. Hmm, that's interesting. So, um, 24 was one of those shows where I remember that audition well. I was shooting something else, and then I got this call for this new show, 24, and it was like a number. I was like, what is this thing? And I only had three hours of sleep from the show that I was doing the previous day, and I remember going in, and I was so tired, and I was like, and then after I did it, and the casting director was like, that was great, but can you do it with more energy? I was like, oh my God. You know, I was just, (laughs) was so exhausted, and I just did it, and then left, and 
you know, end up getting the part. But then we shot the pilot of 24 and the, and it tested well. And then they picked up the pilot, but the ratings weren't good for 24 for the first maybe nine episodes. And, and we were on the bubble for a mm. while. Like, you don't know if the show was even going to come back because yeah. people weren't finding it and they weren't, you know, you have to, you have to commit to that show because you have to watch each episode yeah, to know what's going it. on. Yeah, there's a lot to squeeze in in an episode. Yeah, and it was really groundbreaking at the time. Yeah. It was really nothing, anything remotely like that. So they were really, um, really doing an interesting thing with, with television. And it was smart and it was good and it was well-written and, and, and uh, well-performed. And um, we had a good, strong team. And then all of a sudden... People found the show, and then it, like, skyrocketed. Mm. So, welcome to entertainment. <laughs> you know, <laughs> who how, knows? How was Kiefer? Was he all right? Yeah, no, Kiefer was fine. Cool. We had no scenes together. You know, oh, right. it's that's, like that's some fine. of these big shows that have these sprawling casts. You don't, there's really sometimes little or no interaction. Yeah. Yeah. So, and True Blood, too. Everybody's True Blood, too. You know. Orange is the New Black. Huge, mm. sprawling cast. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, NYPD Blue. Yeah. One of my favorite shows. Really? Oh, yeah. Uh, that show was on for like 15 years mm-hmm. or some, some crazy amount of time. Uh, mm. I, I still think about Dennis Franz. Yeah. Where the hell is that guy? I don't know. But after he, he did wonderful. Wonderful. He won multiple Emmys. And after he did finish uh, doing 260 episodes of NYPD Blue, he's like, I'm oh, retired. Dennis and I will never hear money. from me again. He's like, yeah, I'm going to just chill the rest fuck out. I can dig it. <laughs> He was the bomb. Yeah. Also another groundbreaking show, I, I yeah. feel like, you know, oh, yeah. in so many ways. And, and and the first time that we had seen a character like like Dennis that was conflicted and 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 maybe not all good or all bad, but really full and so well done by him. Mm. Um and, and 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 an interesting new way to tell stories in this very naturalistic sort of manner. Um I had many, many, many auditions for NYPD Blue before I got that part. I probably auditioned for NYPD Blue like 25 times. No kidding. Yes. Whoa, why so many, you think? I don't know. It was like, I guess it was just, I didn't get the- same part? No, different parts parts, over the years. Over the years, I see. And it was like, they call me again and again. You know, on the one hand, it's great when they call you back in. But on the other hand, it's like, just give me a goddamn job. (laughs) You know, at this point, they could offer it to me. They, they, they know how I'm going to do it because yeah. they've seen me so many times. Yeah. Um, and then finally, when I did get it, it wasn't one episode. It was five episodes. Yeah, that's pretty great. <laughs> so it was great. Did yeah. you get to act with him, Dennis? Um, no, Remember? I didn't have any scenes with Dennis. Mark Paul? Because Mark, Mark Paul, Paul, that was Gossler. the Mark Paul Gossler years. Yes. Uh-huh. Did you get to act with him or anything? Not with him. No. no. My 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 storyline was pretty contained. I played a rookie cop named Maya Anderson. If you go back and look at mm, NYPD Blue, I you know a lot of people on NYPD NYPD Blue is famous for being a little bit provocative mm-hmm. for for network television. Yeah, certainly butts. at that time. Side Again, boobs. showing butts. <laughs> so I showed my butt Did on you? NYPD Blue. Whoa. Yes, in a thong, 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 thong. Yes, <laughs> I have on a. Long. And I like look at pictures of that. I'm like, wow, your body was tight. Because I was like, I was like, yeah, if I'm gonna wear a thong. Well, at least let my body be tight. Was that? How did they approach you to, to do that? Uh, well, they didn't really. They approached my agent, and they said, we have a little. You you you're gonna be. Uh, um, you know, they just send it. This nudity writer, basically, right. and so. And my agent just called me gingerly and said, Tanya, we got a fax from N- fax. We got a fax from NYPD Blue. I'm like, oh, okay. I think I was actually on the set. I was working at the time. And they said, hmm, how do you feel about nudity? I was like, what? <laughs> I said, listen, make sure I'm tight. Like, let's just make sure the butt is tight. Yeah. So, and it was fine. Okay. I'm very proud of that, actually. That yeah, mean, it was like cool. ABC. I was like, what are they, you know, I mean, how it's going to be pretty PG. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, and so it was. 
That's and Ron showed his butt. She, a lot of people showed his butt, their butts on, on NYPD Blue. Yeah, a lot mm-hmm. of butts. A lot of butts. A lot of butts. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's hilarious. And was 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 this a situation where strip, uh, strips... <laughs> okay. <laughs> scripts were uh, coming in like day of. Did you get scripts like day of sometimes? I know. I heard that happen. We had happen pages all. day of pages and, day and, of. And, and changes on the spot. Yeah. yeah that's, mm-hmm. that's hard. You got to be real flexible. Like that, right? Did you have a hard time with that? No. You were cool? No, no, no. Yeah, I'm cool. I mean, like, I'm an actor, so, like, I mean, I feel like I get paid to do these sorts of things. Yeah. You would, like, learn your lines and, like, be nimble. Yeah. Yeah. Are you a good uh, memorizer? Are you quick at that? Uh, Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. It's easier when it's written well. It's it's more difficult to memorize lines when the writing's not so great. Yeah. <laughs> um, fortunately, I've, I've not had that problem. I've, yeah. I've fortunately been, have done pretty good stuff yeah. throughout the course of my You've career. You've done a lot of great stuff. Yeah. Uh, do you turn stuff down sometimes where you're like, yes. that's, not a good, that's not a good show? Yeah. Yeah. I just don't want to do it because I feel like I've done that 50 million times and, yeah, yeah. or it's just not interesting. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, hey, you showed your butt once. Would you do it again? Uh, yeah. Uh, you did an episode of ER, one of my, another one of my favorite shows. Never did an episode of ER. Really? Yeah, towards the last season? Or the second oh, last season? Something yeah. like that? I think it was the last season. Because they told her that they might bring her back. She had a lot of that in uh, her, before I, I, I moved to Chicago, mm-hmm. and before she got True Blood, she... She did one episode of a bunch of shows, and almost all of them said that they would have her back, and they never did. They never did, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of that. Yeah. So once she got True Blood, they're like, she's like, oh, they said they're going to make me regular. I was like, sure. Uh, right. But I'll then. Get your home song. There we go. It was, it was quite different. Yes. Quite different. Um, who'd, you, who'd you get to act with in ER? I'm just curious. Oh, gosh. Remember? Myrna. Oh, what's her name? Maura Tierney. Oh, Maura Tierney. I love her. Yeah. She's in that affair show. You watch that? No, I haven't seen that. On Showtime? Mm-mm. She got naked. She what? She got naked. Oh, did she? Yeah. Oh, okay. Recently. All right, Recently. now. Go, Maura. Go, yeah. Maura. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did an episode of Standoff. That's funny. I was in the pilot. <gasps> what? Of Standoff. Really? Yeah. What was Standoff? I even forgot about it. Was, uh, it was, who was in that? I don't even remember. The guy, the guy from Office Space. What's his name? Office space. Oh, what's his name? Oh, bro, I don't remember. But um, I was I was a featured extra. Okay. For like five days. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, five days of work, and it was it was a, a coffee shop where somebody took the coffee shop hostage. There was a gun guy, <sighs> and so we were all in the coffee shop and we were taken hostage for five days. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then we, I don't know. We got out. Mm-hmm. Uh, the end. Yeah. Um, uh, 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 why? Oh, so why stop now? Is a movie. Yes. With Tracy Morgan and Jesse Eisenberg. Yeah. Did you get to act with either of those guys? Uh, yeah, with Jesse Eisenberg. How was that? I got to meet him uh, recently. Deborah did um, a twenty-four hour musical play. Have you heard of that? Twenty-four hour musicals. No. Uh, so in twenty-four hours, like these group of people put on like these fifteen-minute musicals. Okay. Uh, with singing, dancing, stuff like that. Jesse wrote one. Oh, was in his, uh, so I got to meet him for like two seconds. I like Jesse. Yeah, he's pretty. He's, uh, he's a good actor. He's a really great actor. Yeah, very grounded and not, you know, not Hollywood. Yeah, he's like the anti. But um, um, I liked him. I thought he was smart, and he was his. He was just interesting. Yeah, really smart guy. Um. Did you get to meet Tracy at all? Did you get to meet him? Yes, I did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was the, he's, a, he's, he's like, uh, he's like a, a hurricane, right? Yeah, he's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's pretty, he's like always on, right? Tracy. Yes, he is always make, on. Did you make, did he make you laugh? Uh, yeah, I mean, my stuff wasn't with him. It was with Jesse. Yeah. Um, so, you know, other than the table read, I didn't, didn't see yeah. Tracy that much. Um, Carrie Diaries did an episode of that. Oh yeah. And then True Blood, eighteen episodes. So you did. Uh, you were in every every season. Yeah, every season right. except there was one season where they didn't. They weren't doing anything in in Bon Tom. Um, I don't. I think it was season five. 
I was okay. in every episode, every okay. other season. Mm. Uh, how many th- times did you have to audition for that? Do oh, remember? actually, it was the same casting director as um, NYPD Blue and Standoff. Oh. oh, okay. Yeah. So probably just once. or Just if, once, if at all. Yeah. yeah. Just once. I remember that audition really well, too. It was, um, it, I came in and I like, you know, I knew that True Blood was based on these books. Um, and it was HBO and it was Alan Ball. And so usually if I have an audition, it's more than just like, oh, this is the character, this is the story. I like to know who's doing the show, who the writers are, who the showrunners are, what network it's, go- you know, what studio is doing it. Because it just gives me all this other information and um, about how I'm going to approach the character. And... Um, I remember like, okay, I feel like this is going to be a successful show. Mm-hmm. And um, that was my feeling with it, you know, just right off the bat. And and I was just like, you know, it was Kenya and she was like, had this one scene. And what was on the page, I felt like I, I did like, I did what was on the page and I kind of like flipped it and some, I don't even remember what I did, but I remember going into the room and redoing having the audition. And I said, and they were like, ha ah! ha. I was like, what are they laughing at? I mean, they were laughing in places that I didn't expect them to laugh because it wasn't kind of like the joke. But I don't know what I was doing with my face, but whatever it was, they were laughing in places I didn't expect. Alan Ball and Nancy um, Oliver, who wrote that particular episode. Mm. And then I left. And then I literally got the call that I got the part before I got to my car. Ah, <laughs> yes. Cool. And by the time I got to my car, I knew I had gotten tr- uh, True Blood. And not all, but 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 the walk from the audition to the car, I was like, they were laughing. I didn't know that. Were they laughing at me or were they laughing at me? Because I didn't necessarily intend for them to laugh at this. And then I kept looking at the the paper and trying to remember what I did. But it was like, I don't know what I did, but I got it. <laughs> and it was, you know, yeah, it was Alan Ball. And um, and it was great. And they kept calling you back. Kept calling me back. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And you got to do a lot of scenes with the great Chris Bauer. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. What's okay. Chris doing these days? He, are you acting? Yeah. I texted him. I was like, hey, you got to come back. I'm like, he did my podcast a few years ago. Uh-huh. So you got to come back on. He's like, I'm, I'm shooting in New York. He's doing the deuce on HBO. Oh, the deuce. I love, I auditioned for that. Oh. I wanted that part so bad. Oh, I haven't Ooh. seen it yet. What's the part? Oh, she plays a journalist. I don't know who the actress who got the part, but it was, it was, his thing is David, David Simon. Okay. So well written. Yeah. It was like, oh my God, I love that show. Love that show. Mm. Really wanted that part. Alas, it was not to be. <laughs> but I did get another little show called Orange is the New Black. That's right. So that was my consolation prize. That's not bad. Yeah, not bad. Uh, Orange, you did 11 episodes. You've played uh, Laverne Cox's mother. Wife. Wife, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Wife, I apologize. Mm-hmm. Um that was, that was a really interesting storyline. Oh. I haven't watched this past season yet. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a season behind. Are you in this new season? I am at the tail end. You're at the tail end. Okay. Yes. Um, uh, but it's it's fascinating because at one point, Laverne is made as a guy. Yes. Like it's before he he becomes transgender. Gender. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, and that's pretty fascinating. Mm-hmm. And then seeing how... Uh, that um, uh, uh, that arc and that how that metamorphosizes into uh, Laverne and stuff. It's so cool. Mm-hmm. So how did how did you guys get along? Oh, I love Laverne. Yeah, I love love. I feel very protective of Laverne in a way and in, in some strange way. Um, you know, another gr- very groundbreaking show. Netflix. You know, new, I mean. Ever, obviously, the groundbreaking you know, breaking a part too. Yeah, that. groundbreaking part yeah. storyline. It was really, I mean, nothing had been done even remotely uh, like that. Um, 
But Orange is the New Black was one of the first first of two original content. So no one knew if anyone was ever going to see, uh, you know, it was like Orange is the New Black and House of Cards. Yeah. That was Netflix's first original for, foray into original content. And um, we didn't even know. It, no. It's only and they've been season just six now. Killing it. I know. Just annihilating the game. <laughs> but it was such an interesting storyline and... Again, I always look at what's the world of the play, like who are the people involved? And um, I knew it was Netflix and Lionsgate, but it was Gingy Cohan, and I thought she was great, and and she was a fantastic writer, but she was also really subversive, and she had pink and blue and yellow hair, and I was <laughs> like, I want to be in her world. What's I mean, yeah, you know. And Jodie Foster was directing this particular episode. Oh, wow. And I remember reading the the scene. Um, there's a scene where I'm helping Laverne dress as a woman for the first time, and I'm her wife, and she's supposed to be my husband. But I'm helping her transition. And um, I remember reading it, and I said, "Wow, we're gonna do this. You know, this is this is really beautiful stuff." Yeah. And then I remember calling my agent, and I said, "I would like to talk to the person." Who, to the guy who's playing this role of Sophia Bursett. And, and so my agent's like, okay, let me find out. He calls me back. He's like, it's not a guy. It's a transgender woman. I said, well, goddamn, sign me up. This is good <laughs> stuff here. Yeah. You know, this is, I mean, this is important. Yeah. And I knew it was a, an important story. It was an important story for so many reasons. And I was very specific about how I was going to approach this character. I was going to make her very human and very accessible. And, you know, um, I'm just, I'm proud of that character. I'm proud of that storyline. I'm proud of Laverne. That's a, this is an important milestone in, in, in my career. I feel like personally that show. Um, when do you... How does what's her process? Do you guys like rehearse? And do do you talk about your guys' relationship? Anything like that? Well, we did actually when Jody Fawcett. So usually there's no rehearsal time with television. It's quick, 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 go, go, go. Um, but Jody did something very unusual in that she had Laverne and I uh, just together, and we just spent like the morning together. Hmm. It was no talk of anything. It was really no discussion about. She just wanted us to be together in a room. And we were just talking and we had lunch together. And then um, at the end of the lunch, she's like, okay, so this is the way I want to block the scene. And we did a little bit of blocking and she could visualize where she's going to put the camera. She was like, okay, thanks, bye. <laughs> and that was it. Um, and then, you know, we, next day we came to work and we shot it. And um, But it's very unusual that she would even do that. And... Um, when she's an actress, so she kind of yeah. Never use that was that. really a wonderful experience working with her. Yeah, she's so smart and so talented. And um, what's her? What's her? What's she like as a director? I mean, from she 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 seems like she's pretty mellow. Like very mellow. Very, very like. Very real. Very grounded. Yeah. And like. <clears throat> No tantrums and no, no. God, no, <laughs> no. What, what was smart? What smart. Was Laverne, like, was she, was she nervous uh, taking off all the makeup and being just kind of kind of her old? She didn't self, I seem guess. nervous. I mean, you know, you'd have to ask her. I don't know yeah. how she how she felt, but um, I'll you be know. happy to ask her. Can you get her on my podcast? Yeah, <laughs> I'll ask her. Yeah, yeah. do you keep in touch? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah? Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. hit her up. You'd be like, hey, I know this guy. He has yeah. a good podcast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, I love Laverne. She's, I love what she's doing in the world on, on behalf of transgender rights. It's so important. And I feel like, you know, this is, this is, what, this is the best of what we, we, we can aspire to do as, as talent and as artists. If we could shed some light on some situation. And... Um, I mean, I don't think it gets any better than that to be able to do that. So um, I'm just happy to be a part of that storyline and, and humanizing um, transgender people in their lives. And, um, and you know, a, a lot of legislation was, was 
was advanced for, for transgender people during, during the height of that storyline. And certainly people have been um, advocating for transgender rights for, for many, many years, but I felt like we really helped to bring it um, to the masses in a very accessible way. Um, I'd say so too. Yeah. I'd say so too. I'm very proud of that. As you should be. Mm -hmm. As well you should be. Um, I have Beth Dover on. You know Beth? Oh, yeah. yeah I've known, I, she and I went to uh, Second City together like, 15 oh. years ago. Okay. When I first moved out here, mm -hmm. I signed up for class and she was in it. Mm -hmm. And so we've kind of stayed in touch. So she was very kind to do my podcast. So I'm nice. happy to see that she's doing so well. Yeah. She's great. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what do you have? What are you working on these days? So um, these days, oh, I, in fact, mm -hmm. I just auditioned. That's funny you should say podcast. I can't say the name of this podcast. Okay. But they are getting ready to make it into a TV series, and it is the most delicious thing I have ever read in my life. A podcast into a TV series? Oh, yes. is it like a, like a crime thing? One I of those can't things? talk about it at okay. all. Is it Mark Maron's podcast? I cannot <laughs> talk about it at all. <laughs> is but... it my podcast? Oh my God, is it mine? <laughs> yeah. Is it becoming a TV can't talk though? about it at all. Oh my God, it is. It is. But so I <laughs> want to do this thing so bad, and this is I, I've done this maybe four or five times in the course of my career. I tracked down the people who created this thing, and I said, listen, you got to, I got to have that part. I got to have it. Yeah. It's just breathtaking. Does that, does that work? Huh? Does that work? Doing it that? hasn't worked for me yet, but I don't <laughs> right. know if I like these... the courage though. You doing it? Though. I don't know if my my letters ever made it to the people that I had gotcha. wanted it to go to, gotcha. um, and hopefully, you know, this email will find its way to the creators of this show. But this thing here is going to be this is this is another ground. This is going to be another mm. groundbreaking show. Look. If you're listening out there, yes. you know what she's talking about. You know what I'm talking Give about. You know part. what I'm talking about. Give her the part. For that. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, I got my fingers crossed for that one. And then um, I'm shooting a movie. In fact, I'm going to Utah um, Friday cool. um, for a, a very sweet um, Christmas movie um, called Faith and Family. Very nice. And it's very inspiring and sweet, sweet little story. Nice. Mm-hmm. Are you writing anything these days? Um, yeah. I, well, yeah. I got tons of stuff that I have written and, and punching up and starting to have meetings with my about my writing, directing stuff, and then there's Harriet stuff. And Are you looking to uh, direct another feature? Maybe? No. What about TV? Would you direct like an Orange is the New Black or something? I wouldn't direct Orange is the New Black. Or something um, else, maybe? Maybe. 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 Directing is hard. Yeah. Um, you know, for, for, I did it, the independent film was hard. It was very little money and very few people. But I suspect if I had more money and more people, it wouldn't be so hard and I would enjoy it more. Okay. <laughs> so maybe, you know, television is a lot more money there and there's a lot more people there for sure. But I don't even, I mean, I know, I wouldn't know. It would be, it would be different. Yeah. Learning. Because then I'd have to uh, adhere to rules. I didn't adhere yeah. to any rules when we were shooting this independent film for yeah, 21 yeah. days. So I'd have to adhere to rules and have all these sort of things. And that might be weird. Screw rules. Rules, yeah. I don't Me know what else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you want to plug, uh, plug any social media, any websites, anything like that? Your hair so, yeah, thing? my hair care line, Harriet.com. H <laughs> A I R I E T T E. Um, my social media, uh, Tanya TT Wright. That was my nickname for my grandmother. TT. She used to call me TT because just because Tanya. I was little. Okay. TT. Oh, TT. Little okay. TT. Tanya. Oh, cute. Mm -hmm. Tanya TT Wright on Instagram and also on Twitter. Tanya TT Wright, and then Tanya Wright on Facebook. Perfect. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for thank you for talking with me. What is the the this podcast, what is the concept of it? Tell me about it. My podcast? Yeah. Just talking to people. Just talking to people. <laughs> it's not very deep. Ah! But it's, uh, it's, yeah, just talking to people and, and getting to know them and seeing how they tick. Mm-hmm. And learning about their lives and, and careers and stuff. That's so great. Yeah. That's awesome. The, that's, the, that's the majority of it. Some of it's some other stuff, but mm -hmm. that's the majority of it. 
Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you for having me. I know we've been trying to do this for a long time. Yeah. In New York, when I was in New York, I tried. I, I was. We were close. Mm-hmm. And then now you moved out here from New York. Yes. For work stuff, I assume. Yeah, and I felt like it was just time to come back to LA. Yeah. So here I am. Are you happy you moved? I am. Yeah. I am. Yeah, I am. No more winters. No more winters. No That's more winters. brutal. <laughs> Fucking brutal. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Cardi! <laughs> I love Cardi B. I'm obsessed with that uh, Maroon 5 song that she pops in on. Do you know that song, Girls Not Like that. You? No, I don't know I it. I can't get it out of my head. Really? I don't know it. Go find it. Because they re- it's an it's like an old song, but they did a new version of it with Cardi B. Mm. And it's really good. And her and she's really great in it. She's that really album is the bomb. Yeah, she's great. She's pretty great. She's tripper. She is. Did a you stripper. see her with Dave Chappelle? Maybe that is was she there? Uh no. <laughs> no, she wasn't there. <laughs> but she grew up in the Bronx too, so yeah. hi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm, Cardi. It's a Bronx girl. Bronx girls get it done. All right, that's right here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks so much for being here. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you next time. Sounds good. And scene. There you go, folks. That was my talk with Tanya Wright. Thank you so much, Tanya, for coming on. I really appreciate it. Uh, one more time for my plugs. Check me out on Twitter at EJ Scott and at EJ Podcast. Instagram, EJ Scott 1106 website ejscott.com uh running blind documentary on itunes google play and amazon and uh subscribe on itunes and iHeartRadio and all that good stuff thanks so much we'll see you next time